Hey there, it is Victoria Randall with the CNA Instructor's Secret Cocktail. And I am so excited today because I will be interviewing um, Miss Lakeisha Jacobs, who is a registered nurse who owns a nurse aid training program in the North Carolina area. So Lakeisha will be joining us shortly. Um, but before I do so, I definitely uh, wanna thank you guys for joining in and tuning in and please, be sure to have your questions ready for her. Ask her whatever questions you do um, or that you may have about starting a nurse aid training program in general or specifically to the North Carolina area. So um, I see Ms. Jacobs has joined us, so I'm gonna go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Um, I just introduced everyone, um, introduced you to everyone, but if you don't mind just stating again who you are and the name of the school and city and state that you're from. Sure. So my name is Lakeisha Jacobs or Lakeisha Hope Jacobs, and uh, I am from, um, I live here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where I own my business. And the name of my school is New Hope Medical Training. Can you tell everyone uh, what all programs you offer at New Hope? Right now, um, we offer the course of CNA Nurse Aid One program. Um, we also now offer the Nurse Aid Refresher program. And um, that is for those who had their license at one time and a CNA license lapsed or they qualified because of military training or other training. And I also offer the phlebotomy technician program and a phlebotomy refresher program. Awesome. So she, has, she has multiple course offerings, which I love. The more courses you have, clearly the more money-making potential that you have, right? Um, so before we get into talking a little bit more about your programs, can you tell us a little bit about um, any fears that you had about starting a school? Uh, so many people who follow me are so interested in starting a school, but they have some fears. So do you mind sharing with us any of your fears and how you overcame those fears? Sure, so uh, initially, you know, the fears were, you know, going out and marketing to, um, you know, to the public. I'm an introvert, so I, you know, I, I'm a I, I like people one-on-one, -on -one, but as far as getting out there and, put, and marketing, that was a little difficult to overcome. And, the second big, biggest challenge was to um, secure the nursing home contracts. I would say that's the biggest hurdle in a nurse aid program is, you know, winning that administrator over and letting them know why we should be in your, uh, be in your uh, facility. And so um, it, it was tough, but we were able to secure the contracts that we needed. That's a good question right there about the contracts. So tell me a little bit about your um you know, how did you go about that? How did you find out who the person was, who you needed to contact? What did you do when you finally figured out who that person was? Can you kind of outline that for people who are looking to try to get nursing home contracts? What you, it's, it is true, you know, who you know does matter. So definitely, you know, <laughs> um, no, talking to your nursing friends who may work at a nursing home or a friend of a friend, you know, that definitely helps if you have um, kind of way relationships to kind of open the doors at least to talk to the administrator. That has helped um, tremendously, um, as well as just, you know, getting, writing down all the nursing homes that you're interested in and starting one by one and, and doing what we can do to get in the door to um, get in front of that administrator or the person that's in control of um, the clinical um, practices from, from, from nursing schools and nurse aid programs. Um, just like you said, I personally like wrote down a list of all of them and I called them and I found out who the person was, what their email was, what their office hours were. I mean, um, and if right. I couldn't get it, if I couldn't get it that day, I'd call back the next day and try again. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Persistence is the key and don't give up if you get your first no. So you, I think we got about three or four no's before we got a yes. So, um, and it's good to have backup once North Carolina requires you to have a backup, which I was like, oh, wow, you know, it was so difficult to get this one. Then we have to get another one. But it was so true. You, whenever, if, if that facility has state deficiencies or there are other issues, then you, you can't do your training there here in North Carolina. And so you need to have a backup facility as well. 
very good. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience before you got into um, starting your vocational school. Well, I actually have been a registered nurse, believe it or not, for 19 years. And um, majority of my nursing career, of course, as most nurses do, I worked one-on-one -on -one with CNAs. And we did a lot of the, uh, I did a lot of the um, staff development and tr training to ensure they were competent enough to provide care for our patients in the home. And so I liked that part of it a lot and just, um, just kind of transitioned it into, you know, starting my own program where I can help and teach other um, lay people who may want to get into the field and train them like I was doing on my job. So that's kind of how I you had some good one-on-one -on -one training um, in your work life mm -hmm. with CNAs right. before you got, and that's probably what helped fuel your love for it then, huh? Definitely. Definitely. So tell me um, a little bit about, I know in North Carolina um, recently, I want to say it was like in 2012 or 13, maybe even 15. I don't remember the year now, but um, in North Carolina, you were able to have a nurse aid training program just through the um, state. And then they implemented a law where you had to have it a proprietary school licensing. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little, I think you were in business around that time because you've been in business with your mm -hmm. school for how long now? Since 2012. So, okay. um, and then you're right, North Carolina was one of the few states that did not require your nurse aid training program to be a proprietary school. And so um, I kind of jumped in with that when that was going on and you could develop your own curriculum um, and you did not have to go through any type of, um, you know, approval process. And so that's when I started it um, then. But then a few years later, they did make a law change that you did have to become a proprietary school. And, and most of my competitors kind of decided, you know, we're not going to do that. And so I was one of the ones that decided, no, I really enjoy what I do. So I'm definitely going to turn my program into a proprietary school. Awesome. So during that transition, uh, the application process, I know, can be fierce. Um, it Sometimes it kind of scares people away. They look at the application and they're like, ah. So can you tell us a little bit about what parts of the application were probably the hardest for you to overcome and how you did that? Sure. So, you know, you um, here in North Carolina, you do do an initial application that's just saying, you know, I attempt to open up a proprietary school. They want to see your qualifications, what qualifies you to own a proprietary school. Um, you know, me being a registered nurse and um, actually having a business before it does did help a little bit. And so they look at all of that. And then once you pass that stage, they do um, say, okay, now submit us your curriculum to um, start this program. And so that was probably the second hardest part um, agreed on. And so if I had a consultant like yourself that says, no, you're not going to get approved with, you know, 80 hours of a nurse aid program, um, 80 hours of this or 80 hours in the phlebotomy course, you really need a um, 120 hours. And so that not, not knowing that going in, I kind of went back and forth with them with, um, you know, what they felt like was the curriculum that they wanted. So um, looking back, if I had a consultant, I would say, you know, that would save you time and money if you could find out beforehand, you know, what your state is looking for as far as cur um, curriculum. Every state is different. Yeah, at this point, that sometimes it's little things, like I'll consult with someone and it'll be that they didn't have that one year of nursing home experience as right. an RN and they missed that and they didn't know. And, you know, so they got halfway through the application process, not even recognizing that something they needed. Or, I mean, there's small elements, and so you're right, like really bringing someone on to help you look at that beforehand, look at the whole picture mm -hmm. is so key. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about, um, like, going from teaching, um, actually going from the registered nurse working with CNAs, but then actually teaching to pass a state exam, right. because that is different, right? So how mm -hmm. did you overcome that, um, that different type of teaching technique to prepare people to actually pass the state exam? What did you do? Well, I did have a little bit of, um, I was a little bit ahead of the game because I had the um, fast track program first. So I knew what it took to pass. That didn't change <laughs> or what to pass the test. And so then I just added the um, additional curriculum when I opened up my proprietary school. But um, what I did was I tried, I got a lot of feedback from the students, you know, you know, I get that relationship with them. So when they do take the test, they came back to me and says, you know, I passed, but this is 
what they ask me or, you know, I missed one skill because of this. And I use that and help all the, the students beforehand. So I get feedback from um, the students to actually go take the test. And, um, and here in North Carolina, they pretty much write out exactly how, what steps that they want you to do. And so we really focus on those steps in, in, in that booklet and say, this is what we need for you to do in order to pass in the last few days of class, we really just focus on um, getting those steps correct and, and doing it in a repetitive manner uh, also helps um, in class and have them watch others do it. And then we just keep repeating those steps and um, they go in and, and they, you know, they get it all correct and they pass this, they pass their exam. Yeah, so important. That student candidate handbook is yes. so helpful. Mm -hmm. And right. it's not just helpful for the student, but it's helpful for us as instructors. Yes. Like you really, you need to know that book, right? Yes, I do. You do. That book, I tell them it's their Bible <laughs> between now and time to take the exam and, and, it, and it's mine. And so since I've been doing it since 2012, I know it, all the steps, you know, by hand, um, by heart. And so it, the instructor really needs to take time to memorize those steps so they can be helpful to their students. Now, you have a staff, um, a staff of how many now? Right now, I have two, um, three instructors and um, two assistants. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So with that, how do you prepare your instructors to make sure that they understand those steps and that there's some consistency among them? Like, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. um, right. And so what I do is um, I have them come into the classroom while I'm working with the students and train that way. And I really emphasize that they need to go by the steps that's in the booklet. Um, and um, also we uh, also for other skills that are not in the book that the Board of Nursing requires us, uh, us to, to review, we focus, I, as long as it's in writing and that we're on the same page and looking at the same thing, um, it should run smoothly. And if, if there is something that's contradictory, I'll go back and we'll reinforce that teaching. Um, I'm, I'm forever popping into class and making sure that those steps are being done um, um, as it is so they can pass the exam and be confident nurse aides. So Ebony asked, where can I get the student handbook? So Ebony, each state, um, there's, I think, like four different testers. There's Headmaster, there's Prometrics, there is Pearson View. There, are, depending on your state, each state has a um, a person that actually proctors the exam. So for North Carolina, I want to say it's Pearson View. Is it? Yes. Yeah. So in North Carolina, it's Pearson View. So you literally just type student um, CNA or nurse aide candidate handbook in that, and then the mm -hmm. state's name, and it'll pop up. But in her state, it's Pearson View. Here in Georgia, it's Pearson View. And it's different in other states. Right. Um, so what would you tell someone? Like, what type of advice would you give someone coming into the business of starting a nurse aid training program? What? Give me two yeah. pieces of advice you'd give them. Oh, wow. So um, I would say to start off with the nurse aid program first. And then if you want to add additional programs, most people do want the nurse aid program. Um, and, and as far as try to start out with as less overhead as possible, you know, to start small and work your way up, do a lot of sweat equity, you go in and teach those classes and then, and then hand it off to someone. Um, so you can build if you want. And so you can build a business, you don't want to work yourself into a job, meaning that you don't want to, you want to be able to at least be able to delegate some of that off and let someone else teach while, while you enjoy your life um, as well. So, um, and keep an eye on your numbers. See, what, you know, as far as overhead and costs, what do I need to charge to really make the profit that I need? How many classes do I need to make the profit that I want to want to make? I love that you said that. Um, I have a business plan course, and I mm -hmm. tell people that all the time in the business plan. Having a business plan is key. And you can anticipate, like you just said, you know, how many people do I really need to at least break even? You can do that mm -hmm. in your business plan. And your business plan is breathing, living document, it changes. So I'm sure for you, as you added additional programs, your business plan changed, right? Right. right. The structure of things changed. Um, things look differently. I know we talked a little bit about um, getting a spot for the school, right? Um, in the mm -hmm. midst of the application process, a lot of people, their question is, um, thank you, Caprice said um, great advice. Um, 
Um, but a lot of people, their question is the following, you know, do I need to get a, um, a place? What does the place need to look like? When do I need to get it before I submit the application? And it varies per state. So do you, can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about what that looks like in North Carolina? Well, for North Carolina, for the Nurse Aid One program, you have to be approved by both proprietary schools and the Board of Nursing. And so um, the Board of Nursing does say submit your first application before you get office space. And you do want to find out from your Board of Nursing what type of office space are they, are they looking for. Um, do you have to have a separate office um, to lock the files up? How big does the lab need to be? How far a bed, that far apart does the beds need to be? So I would just suggest that um, you rent the smallest space possible. Space. So, and um, and so that was kind of where I was at with um, you. Want to? I had a smaller space, and then when um, it was time for um, the proprietary school to come out, I was able to get a bigger space and get the, and also know what the nurse aid program was looking for and um, make sure it adjusted accordingly. Yeah, so some states, um, they want you to get approval through the state, whether it's the Board of Nursing or the Department of Health or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you go on to get the proprietary school designation. And to your point, you definitely have to have a spot by then. Because how quick did you say you submitted your application and they were ready so, to come out and look? <laughs> right. So with the proprietary schools, um, once they final, um, finalized my curriculum and said, okay, um, this, is, this curriculum works for us, um, I'm coming out next week to see your space. So... Um, very quickly. So I did have my space already. Um, but again, um, you just have to here be prepared for because because when they're ready to come out there, they're ready to come out <laughs> to take a look at it. And if you're not ready, that's not a good thing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm going through the process now in Maryland, and I wish I had this information beforehand. Yeah, but you know, mm -hmm. if you're going through the process, meaning you're not finished, you still have time to get this type of information, okay? Um, it's not too late. I know in Maryland, I think Maryland is pro metrics too, by the way, um, for their state proctor. But anyhow, um, Caprice, please feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Um, I'll put my email in the chat and we can talk because I want you to be able to make sure that you feel comfortable that you have all the information you need to be successful. That's the whole purpose of this. Um, also, so when the board of, I'm sorry, one quick thing about the space. So I had to have two visits. From first, the proprietary school did their visit and allowed me to open the doors. And then the board of nursing um, came out. They also require a certain equipment and space. And so if you don't have all your equipment or if your, your um, curtains are not hanging properly um, or a bed is even not working quite as it should, they will have to... Um, reschedule that visit and come back. So um, again, that's another delay. Now you're paying rent, right? And so you need to make sure that you have all your equipment in place and that there, everything is working as it should. Um, even talk to your coordinators and, and your board, at the Board of Nursing and, and even send them a picture. Does this look okay? Does these curtains look okay? So it will prevent them from having to um, delay your getting approved. You are so right. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> the state came out to my place and I thought I was so ready. I had everything mm -hmm. perfect. When I tell you I went to manipulate my bed so that the head would come mm -hmm. up, the head came up, and then I went to manipulate it so the feet would come up and the feet would not move, y'all. Oh, wow. The yep. feet would not move. And they were looking at me like, well, Mrs. <laughs> Randall, I guess you're not going to get approved. You know, so I'm telling yep. you, little intricate details mm -hmm. you know if they mm -hmm. say you got to have three bed pans you cannot come with two right. you better have three right. exactly. <laughs> whatever it is that they say because something that small like she just said will delay you and now who knows when they're going to come back mm -hmm. so on their schedule mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep um er erica she's asking erica lakeisha uh, where did you get most of your equipment from she said Believe it or not, I was actually got a lot of things on Amazon. Um, you know, everybody has Amazon, Amazon Prime. Um, I got a lot of things there. And I know there are other programs out there like Nurse Pocket or Pocket Nurse, I'm sorry. Um, Walmart has, you know, things. And we also have a um, things like the towels and the blankets and the pillows. You know, get that from Walmart. 
And then we have a medical supply, um, the local medical supply stores right here in the area. In your area, you can go and get things like condom catheters and um, catheter bags and things like that. Um, so a combination of the, of the three. Um, Craigslist and I, for the hospital beds. Hospital that's beds, what I was Craigslist. just getting ready to say. <laughs> Please go to Craigslist, okay? Yeah. The hospital beds, the wheelchair, the hospital bed, um, the bedside table, whatever. Those, you know, the briefs, those types of things. I can't tell you how many people um, I reached out to on Craigslist that were like, hey, I have this you know grandma passed it's just sitting here come get it for two hundred dollars you know and you get the whole right. kit and caboodle so definitely look for stuff like that um people who um who are clients of mine you actually do get a discount with pocket nurse i just still the deal with that mm -hmm. so pocket nurse if you're a client of mine you uh can get um a discount with pocket nurse and i i recommend pocket nurse for a lot of the uh continuous equipment like there'll be equipment that you're going to continuously need or simulation mm -hmm. equipment, like like you just said, the condom caps or um, mm -hmm. the catheter, the Foley, anything like that. They have a lot of that simulation equipment is built specifically for educational purposes and they have it at really good rates and the customer service is phenomenal. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, mul there's a multitude of options. But whatever option you do come up with, find one that works for you on a consistent right. basis after the initial, right? How do you right. find what all you need is required for your state visit? Um, it should be on the state's website. And if it's not, because some states it's not on the website, you have to email them and ask for it specifically. Do you remember if, you, if it's on the website for you in North Carolina? Yes. Yes. It's on our, we call it North Carolina, ncnar.org. Click education and they try to put everything on there, you know, to make it convenient for you. The, I guess to prevent a bunch of phone calls and emails and it was pretty much laid out for us, and the equipment list, all that was there for the public. Yeah, but be careful, because like, it's not easy to find usually in some states like North Carolina. I mean, not North Carolina, nor, uh, New Jersey. None of it's online. Um, Alabama, I think, too. So you just have to call mm -hmm. and find out. So always Google nurse aid program uh, application and then your state's name. If you type in, if you Google nurse aid training program application, then you'll find what you need specifically to your state. Otherwise, you're going to find a whole bunch of CNA schools, that, and that's not what you're trying to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so anything else you want to add? I know you got to get going. I thank you so much for your time, Ms. Jacobs. Sure. Anything else that you want to add that we didn't get a chance to talk about that you feel would be very beneficial? No, that that was it. You know, just you know, take advice of consultants and other people who are um, had the training program and um, and get as much education information as you can before before starting out. And um, just good luck and um, wish everyone the best. One more thing. One more thing. Um, the finances. Everyone wants to know about finances because sometimes they get in your business about the finances. I'm sorry if you don't mind just talking about that real quick. Um, were they in your business about finances or um, what did that part of the application process Well, the, like? proprietary, the proprietary school did ask me, you know, how much money did you have in savings? So they did want to know. They didn't give you a certain number. That, they just want to know how are you going to um, sufficiently, how um, financially operate your school as you get it off the ground. So um, some may ask for that. So it's good to kind of have some reserve. Or you, it doesn't um, for that. And whether it's a loan or money that you have stocked away for um, that you can get to, whether it's, you know, I don't recommend you going to a 401k, but as long as you have something that if you had to get it, that you you had it available. Um, and um, I actually, and I still do, kept my full-time job. I, I don't recommend anyone to quit their job right away. Um, so you can use your salary, even if it's part-time, to support your company until you get it to where you want it to be. Uh, Evangelist Grace said, how did you go about startup capital? I literally just saved up a whole bunch of money and started my school mm -hmm. that way. I didn't take out a loan. I didn't do anything. How did you go mm -hmm. about it? The same way I had, I had money and savings um, that was available for me. So I, I, I also didn't want to take out a loan. Yeah. I mean, you can get a low interest credit card or something like that, but not any, you know, to help with supplies, but um, I wouldn't, you know, spend over a few thousand just to just to get that. But other than that, you know, I try try to stay away from the loans if I can. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a video on YouTube, Miss Grace, about that. Um, it talks about how to get 
angel investors versus loans versus bootstrapping your own startup. So if you have not been on my YouTube channel, um, if you go to YouTube and type in The Secret Cocktail, you'll find my YouTube channel. And I have a lot of uh, useful videos that gives you everything, information about topics, and that's one of them, okay? All right, so thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, now everyone's pouring in the questions, and I know she says she's got to get going. <laughs> right, it's all right. Um, yeah, you know, so thank you so much for your time. Mm-hmm. Thank you, uh, Victoria, and you guys have a great day.